Yes, guys, what is going on? Welcome to episode six of the Under 23 So Rare Road to Glory. I hope you're all having an amazing time opening your special edition cards. If you've won any, please do let me know in the comment section. I haven't been lucky enough to win any yet, but I am hoping to pull a few later on uh, on stream with Sora Data. So go and check that out Yeah, when, when we're live. But yeah, what's going on? We're back for episode six of the Road to Glory. And yeah, it's, it's been... I mean, has it been a long international break? I, I feel like it's kind of flown by, to be honest. It's been a nice break in, in some way as well. Um, not having to worry about our cards letting us down, getting injured, etc. Yeah, it feels like it's been a nice little sort of factory reset in some ways. Um, I know we've only had a couple of games so far in the season, but you know, we ended sort of last episode on a promotion. So we're in Division 3 now in in Under-23 Limited. We won our first box from, you know, Sorry Pro. So yeah, things are looking up. We haven't got anything to look back on in this in this video because I didn't have any lineups over the international break. And I've not made any changes to the actual gallery itself. I had a little think yesterday and the day before actually. Do I need to bring anyone in right now? Am I in desperate need? And you know, we, we mentioned it on, on the last episode. Defenders are obviously pretty short as are forwards now that Sabai has obviously moved to Saudi. But I had a little look forward, um, you know, as far as the fixtures this weekend and I mean, we'll get into some lineup building soon, but it, it didn't really, you know, I don't think we need to do anything right now. Touch wood, all our players are fit and, you know, everything's sort of dandy as far as our defenders and forwards go. Um, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm sort of referring to Negley and, and Vega there. They're the only two sort of forward and defenders we have at our disposal. So, yeah, it's, it's one of them where, you know, as long as they're both fit for now and on to play, I'm quite happy to kind of run them into the ground because... I was looking uh, on Sorry Data yesterday, and the fixtures that both of them have coming up, Negley uh, and Vega, are pretty favourable. So as long as they stay fit, like I said, I don't think we're going to really need to be changing too much. It's, it's always nice to have more options. Um, I'm not saying Vega's going to score like a 30 AA in every, in every you know, upcoming game that this that's happening for him. But, you know, especially this weekend, I think he's at home. Um, I think a lot of the fixtures actually fall at home for us this weekend. So I'm buzzing for it and... Yeah, I don't think I need to, you know, actually get rid of any those midfielders that I said I might do. Um, if I was to do it, I think I would wait for Leighton Clarkson to get back fit, see how well and see how quickly he gets integrated back into the Aberdeen team and then kind of take it from there because I don't want to be selling Julian Bass, if we're being honest. Guzman just got his first uh, decisive for Derby, so he's, you know, in good form in that sense, even though it was before the international break and... And Bulat's come in. I mean, he hasn't really done too much for us yet, but he, he's a nice uh, depth piece in midfield for now. And yeah, I just don't think I need to really add anything right now. If I had an, you know, an injury to Vega, an injury to Negley, then of course it'd be panic stations and we'd be having to you know, force somebody back or force somebody into the team uh, by selling somebody else. But I'm quite happy with you know, what we've got for this weekend. And the, obviously the spreadsheet hasn't changed too much. Uh, you know, we haven't really picked anyone up, nor have we sold anyone. So that one's quite easy to um gloss over and then it's i mean yeah we're obviously going to go into some lineup building and i'll show you what we've got this weekend contemplation wise it's obviously not that much because we only have you know x amount of forwards and, and defenders right now but this is just the realities of having a smaller gallery it's going to happen now before we do get into some lineup building i do want to get into rivals of course the squad is now up and running uh, big congratulations to tom last week I believe he was, or he finished first in the in the squad, um, and he won a two a many limited card for doing that. So yeah, Sora obviously gave him a box, and he and he won a, a really good card. I don't know what two a many goes for right now. We'll have a little look. Um, of course, it's in season two a many as well. I can't imagine he's cheap. When I say cheap, he's probably like fifty, yeah, fifteen quid. Oh no, he's not. He's even more than that. Jesus, thirty quid. I wish I would have won him. Thirty-eight quid. Jesus. See, that's just really incentivized me now to, to try and sort of climb the, the squad leaderboards because, of course, only top five in my squad or in the squad uh, get boxes. First gets well, first and second get a three-star box, two-star for third, and one-star boxes for fourth and fifth. I'm currently in sixth um, as captain, and yeah, I'm obviously letting the team down right now. I need to get, I need to jump, I need to jump up into that top five at least to get to get some sort of um, reward box. I've been playing Rivals over the last few days. I know it's international break, so we've had less games going on, of course. I played a, a random 
Brasileiro Serie A game last night. I won it, even though Rivals was messing up last night. I don't know if you played it, but yeah, something weird was going on. And thankfully, I won it. I lost in the Venezuela game, won in the South Korea game, won in the Welsh game, uh, won in this Colombian game, won in the Spain game. Like, I've been on a bit of a run, to be fair. I think it was yesterday or the day before in one of these wins I got. I think it was in this international game. I, you know, like the two challenges, I smashed them both out, out at once. And of course, all I won was level ups. Lads, I'm serious now. Like, I, I have not won Essence from Rivals for a long, long time. Um, we're still at 13 Essence. We won three from our uh, last Sora Pro box. So we're seven Essence away from crafting. It's just becoming quite frustrating, if I'm being honest. Um, I know I can't expect Essence from the Rivals boxes every time. But Jesus, man, give me... Give me something to, to cling on to. Like, all I'm winning is tickets. We're still at eight. Well, we're at 81 tickets. We're not really, yeah, down on tickets, which is fine. Like, it allows us to keep playing. I get it. But, yeah, it's just becoming really, 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 really annoying. And, yeah, I'm sure you guys are experiencing similar. Uh, if not, then you're obviously really, really lucky. But on the topic of squads, as you might notice, we only have nine in there right now. And I have sent a YouTube comment out to one of you guys in last week's episode who basically said he doesn't really play, um, or they don't really play Sora. Like, they don't really have, like, a community to attach themselves to, as far as, um, yeah, they're just not in any community. So, I think he's gone from, like, Division 5 to, uh, Division 10 to 5, sorry, um, in his pitch. And, yeah, I, I thought, you know what, I, I can't let somebody just play Sora on their own, in that sense, right? They, they need some sort of community, and, yeah, you know, what better than getting them into the RTG squad. So I have sent him a comment. Well, I've commented back. I need I need to be contacted in, you know, in Discord or Twitter uh, so I can send you the link, mate. And uh, yeah, just buzzing to have you in and that'll complete the 10. Eventually, I think we're going to replenish the squad, if that makes sense, just to give everyone a chance of being in the squad. Not everyone, but, you know, more people than just the nine that are in there. So I think that, yeah, gives, gives a nice little element to it. I don't know. Is it monthly? Is it whatever? We'll have to kind of work that out. But yeah, no one's getting kicked yet. Don't worry, everyone's... Still pulling their weights. So that's rivals out the way. Let's get into some lineup building then. Like I said, I don't have that many contemplations, of course, in, in defense um, and goalkeeper. But our goalkeeper plays at home. Good home fixture against Varazdin, which I'll take. Vegas at home as well to... Who are they playing? Sorry. Is it Boa Vista? Yeah, it is Boa Vista at home. 44% clean sheet probabilities. He scored okay last game. 11-12 AA in a 1-0 loss. So the issue with him is, like, I'm with fullbacks in general... They just do lose a lot of possession, which converts negatively on, on the on the score, scoring matrix, sorry. Um, so yeah, you know, it's high risk, high reward with, with fullbacks most of the time. Like you really need them to get an assist or something to kind of offset that uh, negative AA that they end up eventually getting. Of course, three midfielders to choose from and Negley is definitely going to be our forward at home to go ahead Eagles. Now, you know, last week it, it kind of worked out for us that Julian Bass assisted Negley. So we had that double decisive, which is the best feeling in Sora. It doesn't really get much better than that. Bulat's away to Denda, who are surprisingly top of the league, which is just mental. Newly promoted side. And then Guzman is at home to my lads, Cardiff City. Derby at home to Cardiff. Their favourites, Cardiff, I don't think, they have definitely not won a game. I think they drew against Swansea. Um, so they picked up one point, I believe. We're in a really bad rut right now. I say we as in like, I'm from Cardiff, I don't really support them, but I kind of have to by default. Yeah, they drew one all to Swansea uh, before that hand scored a goal. So yeah, Derby are definitely favourites, it seems like. I am going to go over to Predictify though in a minute, just to double check if all our players are kind of set to play. So this is what I would like to go in with. I'd probably go in and Captain Negley, to be honest, just because he's most decisive capable, really, in that side. Bass, de no, there's definitely an argument for Bass as well, but... I think Negley's a little bit more nailed on from what I remember seeing. So, so Predictify have a nice little ui update feature where you can connect your sora account um, and it will display like the matches that your players in your gallery are playing in so you don't have to sort of filter through every single game if you don't want to um, if you don't want to use it you can obviously just untoggle it but we're going to go to challengers and we're going to check out the area of vc and what sparta rodderham are up to so julian bass is 65 percent on negley's 90 percent on see how the coloration's a little bit different there's a, a yellow sort of backdrop basically meaning that you own those cards Kilitano can be in the starting lineup but bass and clement are doing very well so yeah if it seems like bass should start going you know going off how well he's been playing it'd be a bit disappointing to see him sort of drop out of the starting 11 on on merit if that makes sense so even though he's at 65 percent i don't usually like to take risks like that um but from like knowing him and knowing how well he's been playing 
it feels like he, he would be quite deserving of, of keeping that spot and, until anything sort of, yeah, goes wrong, if that makes sense. I, I can't imagine they, they really switched that up yet. So I'm pretty happy to kind of risk that. Negley doesn't seem like much of a risk. If we go to Derby and is yeah, Big Kenzo's at 80%, which is great. Uh, then we need to, we're not going to be able to get predictions for uh, Vegas team just because there's no expert that does those. It's mainly like the big, you know, the big teams in, in Portugal, which is fine. So I'll, I'll probably do a little bit of tweet, Twitter research, sorry, <clears throat> later to see if I can find anything on him. But with those obscure sort of teams and players playing for those teams, it is quite hard to, to find information a lot of the time. So you're kind of going in blind, which isn't ideal, obviously, because you don't want to take risks. And yeah, that, that's kind of why, you know, more popular players, Premier League players, etc., are just more expensive on this game because you can just get more information about them, you know, comparing them to like maybe a J League team or yeah, like Vegas team. So we can't really look at him. Can we see in contender what the Croatian, yes, yeah, so Sibonek do have predictions and Dakovic is on at 90%, which is perfect. We will take a quick look at Standard Liège. We're going to have a look at, so Bulat's 80% on. So, you know, on paper, Bulat is quote unquote the safer option over Bass, but as a matchup, I, I much prefer to. To kind of risk Bass knowing that you know he's not like fully nailed on because he's 65%. But I think there's just a lot more upside in going with Bass, especially when I'm playing him with Negley with that double sort of decisive capabilities. And you know, Bulat hasn't really shown me enough over the last couple of games that like he's deserving really of, of me playing him over over Bass to be honest. And, and Guzman uh, has, you know scored well last game, so I, I kind of have to back you know form over anything else. But yeah, that's what we're going in with. We of course are playing in Division 3 now, which is exciting. So it might be a little bit tougher. Scores might be a little bit higher than usual than they would be in, in Division 3, but that's fine. I'm, I'm definitely up for the challenge. So the rewards aren't out yet for whatever reason. So that's a bit weird. But of course, we got promoted. So there's just under 3,000 players in there right now. Let's toggle this to limited only and just throw the boys in. Um, actually, I nearly forgot. This is one of the most important things I was going to do in this video. And I almost forgot. I was checking yesterday and I had a good amount of limited level ups in, you know, in my inventory for whatever reason. I don't know when I kind of won them but i have somehow and of course you can only apply three level ups to each card so what do i have i have seven level ups bass is already at 6.5 percent so i i'm quite inclined to try and boost him up but then if you look at like negley's only at 2.5 guzman the same and vegas 3.5 so what i might do is i might boost negley up from level five to level six and i think i'm gonna boost him again to get him up to 3.5 2.5 is just so low isn't it there's gonna be so many more powerful cards than than that so yeah i'm kind of doing them a disservice in in having them so low but that's just how we bought them off the market of course so i've boosted those two up to level seven how many boosts do we have left i think we have three left don't we yeah we have three left let me boost vega to level um what was that or to four percent and i'm gonna boost bass up to 7.5 percent i wouldn't usually like the most optimal thing is to wait until level like 16 or 17 to boost your cards because those level uh, those yeah those levels take a lot longer um, because there's just a lot more XP required to, to boost them and so yeah but it's one of them sort of situations where we have like really good matchups this weekend they're all at home they're all in favorable matchups and it, it feels right to kind of yeah you know utilize those boosts at this point rather than later on where we might not get five really good matchups to where I think those cards or my cards are going to score pretty well yeah I just wanted to do that before we submit the team because there is a weird little glitch with Sora where if you submit your team so say if I put this team in and click confirm and then apply the boosts they wouldn't work if that makes sense like they wouldn't actually add on to the card you have to like go in and out so you'd have to like unconfirm your team put the boosts on and then sort of confirm it again so our boosts are kind of locked in yeah uh, i'm pretty sure uh, we, we've done it the right way and yeah division three just under three thousand entrants so far i'm sure that'll grow to like three and a half maybe even four so you've got five divisions of course just under 700 in division one two two in division two we're in division three so just under 3k it's 2.3 in division four so Division 3 feels like the most um, packed league, you know, as far as numbers go, which is interesting. I'm sure there'll be more rewards given out. They're not displaying them for whatever reason right now, but I'm pretty sure there'll be more rewards given out because of that. And top 12% will get promoted into Division 2. So it's not easy. Uh, top 15% got promoted from Division 4 to 3, and that was us last, last week. Um, and hopefully we can 
Hope, hopefully we can do a, a little Bournemouth back-to-back promotions. I'm sure the EFL clubs have done it as well, but Blackpool might have done it as well. Luton, I'm sure they've they've done a, maybe a back-to-back-to-back, wasn't it, Luton? Up into the Prem, of course, relegated now. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with where we're at. Like I said, I, I would have made a few changes if... Or I would have made a few additions, sorry, to the to the gallery. Uh, if, like, I didn't like Vega's matchup or if I didn't like Negley's matchup. But fortunately, I did. And I'm, I'm in a position where I'm, I'm pretty happy just to see how this goes. We've applied the level ups. We've made our cards as powerful as they kind of can be for now. And yeah, we've just got to let it play out and, and see and see where we end up. Hopefully, there's a little promotion in there for us. I'm going to work hard at, at Rivals now for the next few days. And hopefully, I can get uh, to the top of the top of the squad and, and get a promotion in like the normal side of Rivals as well. And back down to Division 5. So... Hope you've enjoyed the video, lads. Let me know in the comments section if you pulled any special edition cards. Um, let me know if you're excited for this weekend as well. Massive, massive weekend ahead. Loads, loads of really cool fixtures. And yeah, just buzzing for international break to be over. Hope you've enjoyed the video, lads. Leave a like if you did. And I shall see you guys in the next one.